There are basically no true heritage built barefoot boots, which was really surprising to me as I got more into the barefoot world because I really wanted one after designing this short little boot with Jim Green, but there's like none out there. And there's plenty of like more modern style barefoot boots, some semi heritage ones with lots of synthetics and some other stuff and a good amount of cheap boots and some small brands doing similar stuff. But none of them really have those attributes that make heritage boots so reliable and so durable for a couple hundred years now. So I did it with Jim Green and we spent the last six or seven months working on this design, pulling inspiration from one of the coolest boots in history, the paratrooper boot, and taking South African boot making techniques and infusing it with American styling to make the first true heritage boot that you can actually work in, that you can hike in, you can wear casually. So we're gonna run it through our tests, cut them in half to really show you why heritage boots are so durable and the reason why there really aren't any true heritage barefoot boots because there's a good reason for it. So what is this boot that we've spent the last like six or seven months on? Well, the brand is Rose Anvil X Jim Green. The style is the Barefoot African Trooper named after the Paratrooper boot. They weigh one pound, seven ounces. They retail for $229. They're made in South Africa. And I basically already gave you the positioning of this boot. And if you want a pair of these, be sure to check them out via the link in my description. If they're sold out, we try to do a few batches of years of these collaborations that we do with Jim Green. So make sure you're on the limited edition email list so that you get early access, you get all the size information and so you don't miss out on the next drop so I'll put that in the description so why are there basically no heritage barefoot boots well it's because it's kind of a walking contradiction semi pun intended because you're trying to combine the two ends of the boot spectrum because on one side you've got the heritage boots all the way to the Pacific Northwest 15 layers of leather like three pounds ridiculously over belt heritage boots are notoriously narrow rigid super heavy big heels ultimate heritage which runs counter to the entire barefoot concept with the wide toe box flexible lightweight zero drop and honestly ugly as sin so the interesting thing and the hardest part about this project and why there, I don't think there's any other barefoot boots is because it is such a huge contradiction and in order to meld the two of them you have to try to find the sweet spot between all these little aspects and details to maintain the best aspects of both to make it a reliable dependable boot that still has the barefoot attributes so now starting to go through the details, the goal with the leather was to make a supportive leather that's not too rigid, that restricts your movement, but is still durable enough that it's not gonna wear out. So we went with Jim Green's work boot leathers. It's a new buck leather that's 2.3 millimeters thick, still supportive, but easy to break in. Usually you see work boot leather anywhere from 2.5 to 3.5 millimeters. Sneakers are usually one to 1.5 millimeters. So the thicker the leather, the more supportive, the thinner the leather, the more flexible. So 2.3 millimeters seems a nice middle ground. For some reason, there's a lot of overlap with barefoot boots and the like eco-friendly vegan vegetarian thing. And so that a lot of the people that are buying those boots don't want a really chuck full of leather boot that they're wearing a dead animal around. For me, obviously I love leather and I think it's cool that this been tens of thousands of years through nature, research and development of survival of the fittest to end up with the ultimate material to wrap your foot in for flexibility, protection, for durability. I love leather, but I see how people would want to wear a dead animal around on their foot. So I think that's a big part of why you never see a true heritage boot. So on the spectrum of barefoot to heritage, I think this is a little bit closer to the heritage side, just being a little bit thicker and a little bit harder to break in. Next to the lining, so this is where we pull a lot of heavy inspiration from the jump boot or the paratrooper boot, because this boot is made to be as durable as possible, but as simple as possible, and they remove all the unnecessary material. So this boot is completely unlined all the way through the boot. And so we wanna do the same thing with this boot and have zero lining. So you only have the necessary materials to make it work as a boot. So you have less failure points. It's a little more flexible, it's lighter, it's more breathable. And you don't really lose a lot of that structure and support because it's a 2.3 millimeter leather. So on the spectrum of barefoot to heritage, this is a little bit more on the barefoot side because you rarely see a completely unlined boot in the heritage world. Next to the insole, the goal is to make it simple, durable, and comfortable. So this boot only has a leather half sock liner, which is also very similar to the jump boot. Boot. And in the forefoot, you're standing on this layer here, this leather layer, that's three millimeters of veg tan leather. The benefits of it are that it smells a lot less than synthetics, it's more durable, and after they're broken in, the insole compresses and shapes the shape of your foot, making it more comfortable and more custom fit to your specific foot. The downside of it is leather's more expensive. Most leather insoles we see in true heritage boots are around five millimeters, where this is three millimeters. So you're not gonna get quite as deep of a footprint. And just generally, leather is harder underfoot than foams and a lot of synthetic 
materials, and that's why we've actually just finished developing our boot breaker insole to help with the one problem that almost all Heritage boots are, and that's that hard leather insole, and especially breaking it in. Everyone that buys a pair of these, we're gonna give them a 50% discount code. It softens it just enough while still being able to compress into the leather and giving you that footprint inside of your boot. And if you want a pair of those, just generally, we'll put links to those in the description. So on the spectrum from Heritage to Barefoot, this is definitely more on the Heritage side with that thick layer of veg tan. And the next layer down is this rubber slip sole that you mostly see in only Heritage boots because a lot of Heritage boots are made to be resold because the upper lasts so long with the high quality materials that you're gonna wear your outsole out sooner. And instead of throwing away the boot, you just take it to a cobbler. All I do is pull this outsole off and glue a new one on. And these outsoles bond better to rubber. So we put this rubber slip sole in there. The downsides of that is it adds more weight. It's a little bit less flexible and you lose a little bit of ground fill, which I'm totally fine with. So on that spectrum, I'd put it just a little bit to the heritage side. And speaking of the outsole, the goal with this was to make it durable, yet squishy, grippy, yet flat. And that is a tough thing to do. And we designed this outsole with Jim Green for this boot, the Barefoot African Ranger. And, and I love it. I think it turned out really, really good. It's not gonna be the most durable, it's not gonna be the softest, and it's not gonna be the grippiest either. And so we tried to find that sweet spot between all those, and that's why we ended up with having these little lugs that still give you some grip, but they're not so sparse that they're gonna wear out fast. It's a 55 Shore A, so it's, it still has a lot of squish, but it's also not gonna wear out really quick. And it's eight millimeters tall, so you still get a lot of material to wear through, but it still gives you a lot of that flexibility and wear protection, so you don't have to put a new outsole on after like 10 miles. And we also did the puncture test on it. it took 180 pounds to puncture through all the way to the inside of the boot. And finally to the construction or how all this boot is put together. The goal with it was to be true heritage, but simple. And heritage construction is usually a lot more durable than other types of constructions because instead of just glue holding everything together, you have glue and heavy stitching. And there's three popular types of heritage constructions. Goodyear Welt, Blake Stitch, and Stitch Down. There's plenty of other side ones, but those are the main three. And we went with Stitch Down mostly because that's what Jim Green does, but it's also the flattest and simplest of those three types of construction. Because instead of everything being tucked in and flipped onto the inside with a lot of bulk and material and fillers and gammings and all this different stuff, everything's just flared out. And so all this structural stitching is all on the outside of the boot so that when you're standing in this boot, you only have those structural layers. There's no there's no stitching, there's no nails, there's, no, there's nothing going on inside of there because all the construction happens on the outside. The result of that is it's really, really flat underfoot. It's not gonna bow out like a Goodyear welt with all that cork compression pressing. You're not going to get high spots and low spots from anything being tucked in and underneath. And it also makes it more water and dirt resistant. But the cons of a stitch down construction is they don't look quite as refined and finished as a nice Goodyear welt. And if you do wear through this material where a welt would normally be on a Goodyear welt, that's the upper. And so if you wear through that where the cobbler screws it up, you can't just sew on another welt like a Goodyear welt. And on the spectrum, I think it's right in the middle for me, maybe a little bit more of the heritage. And keep in mind, these spectrums are very personal for each individual and what you're looking for. So now it's these things in half and I'll show you what's on the inside, how all these pieces connect and go together and why there's really no true heritage boots until this boot. All right, we got it cut in half, and if you're not subscribed, consider doing it. And thank you guys for supporting these collaborations. It's what's making all this possible. It's my favorite thing to do. And if you do want a pair of these, check them out in the description. So now, let's see what's inside. So now you can really see how simple this construction is and that you really are just standing on those layers with no other intricacies and things screwing up that flat plane that you're standing on. And you can also see just like the jump boot, it is a true double layer toe cap. It also is fully gusseted all the way up to keep dirt and junk out of your boot. And obviously the new Rose Anvil collaboration tag, we're putting in all the collaborations and all the little teeny changes and differences we did to make it a lot more, not just American styled and looking boot, but to fit and feel and perform like 
American style boot. Even compared to the AR8 that Jim Green already makes that was kind of the foundation for this pattern that we slowly tweaked and adjusted over 15 plus prototypes, six or seven months, late nights going back and forth to slowly shape and adjust these panels to match more like the iconic boots that we modeled it after with the jump boot, with the Iron Ranger, with the Pacific Northwest boots, making it a two piece counter and backstay. And a huge one is this U-shaped panel where the vamp meets the tongue that distributes that pressure point across a bigger area and allows that fully gusseted tongue to fold easier as you lace these up. And one of the biggest things that might even go completely unnoticed is the quarter panels. We shrunk them, brought them in, and adjusted them so they weren't completely touching as you lace them up. So you have that, that classic gap all the way down the lacing so you have less bulk over your instep making it more comfortable, fit better, and more adjustability. We removed the collar to make it more heritage looking, added this eyelet at the top which also helps in the same way as the collar because you usually lace it up to the speed hook it gives you a little bit of extra wiggle room but if you ever need it you can lace it through that top eyelet to make it really secure and across the board we adjusted everything millimeter by millimeter until it's exactly right and for a full iteration and prototyping breakdown go watch that video on Roseample too. So then why has there not been any true barefoot heritage boots up to this point? Well because it's, it's so hard to take these two contradicting parts of this spectrum super simple super flat wide toe box light flexible all this stuff all that rigid heavy duty everything and try to mesh the two of them a lot of times when you do that you end up in the middle with zero of the values from either side and it just doesn't work because if you go too heritage you lose a lot of the things that make barefoot boots what they are but if you go too barefoot you lose a lot of the heritage stuff that makes them durable dependable and all those values and so just generally it's a really difficult task to combine those two things and maybe most importantly try to make them look really really good so did we do it did we pull it off well I think we nailed it and obviously I designed it and I've been working on this for a really long time but I think we've made something truly unique that wasn't available on the market that solves a lot of the problems that people have with heritage boots and solves a lot of the problems with barefoot boots by melding the two of them meeting in the middle by combining that South African boot making technique with American styling with the heritage quality and rolling in that inspiration of the paratrooper boot to make a true heritage barefoot boot. And we have an upcoming video comparing all the other similar boots because we're not trying to shove anyone out of the market. We're not trying to corner the market by making these collaborations. And it just seemed fair and right to highlight the brands that have put this style of boot on the map. So be on the lookout for that. And if you do want a pair of these, I put the sizing video in the description and all the information you need to get a pair of these. But if they are sold out, we're gonna do more drops probably in the future. So make sure you're on that limited edition email list so you get all the information you need to order so you know when it's coming out. And you also get early access so you guarantee yourself a spot on the next drop. So thank you guys for everything you do. Shout out to Jim Green for putting up with this. This was a very intensive design process. It was not easy to do. So huge shout out to Gareth at Jim Green. Huge shout out to the entire Jim Green crew being willing to make this kind of boot for us. And I feel really fortunate to be able to do this. It's literally a dream come true. It's something that means a lot to me. So thank you guys. See ya.